two personal stories if I can. When I was your age, at this moment in time, I was working to make money to go to college. And I had worked in a meat shop and cut my finger bad, right to the bone. But like a doctor's son, being so smart, I waited 48 hours before I went to the hospital. I was not a good student in high school, mediocre. I hadn't really set goals for myself. Wasn't sure I was gonna go to college. By the time I got myself to hospital, I was running a little over 105 fever, five blood infections, two bone infections, and gangrene. And I was ever so close to the other side for about 72 to 96 hours. I was in ice packs, trying to control the fever. The doctors argued among themselves, just take off his arm to see if we can save him. It took three weeks to stabilize. I was in the hospital for seven and a half weeks. In that period of time, I lost three roommates who all died. And at every night as I sat up, because a lot of nights I couldn't sleep, I was determined that I was going to make this and make something of my life that I wasn't going to middle around and mess around anymore, but I was going to do something. And anything I've ever accomplished in life since high school graduation is due to the fact that I figured something else when I faced this close to not being here. In addition, I, my whole career, I wanted to get to a White House and work for a president. I was working in President Clinton's White House. That was my drive in my career. My wife, then, who we were dating, lived in Chicago. I convinced her to come out to Washington and join me. The day she arrived in Washington, giving up her career, her job to be with me, I got fired from the White House. I appreciate the laughter. It wasn't funny then. I thought everything that I worked for was passing before me and I had to ask somebody to give up something she cherished to be with me. I asked the president for a second chance. And within three years, I was his senior advisor for policy, politics, and press. Well, thank you. Uh, but all by way of saying, the way you measure the peaks you achieve, like this, like college, and like your career, aren't these milestones, and they're great. This is the beginning of a journey. This is not the destination. Your destination is the next graduation from college. Your destination is a career. Your destination is a job. Your destination is a family. And then you begin a whole nother journey in life with another loved one. But the real test of your character and the real test of the values your parents taught you is how you take failure how you take a stumble, how you take a stumble and turn it into a success. How do you take a failure and make an achievement out of it? And if you can figure that out, you have this trick and the equation and the combination to life. And I want to congratulate every one of you because to get here, you had to face adversity. You had to face a bad grade. You had to face real challenges. And I can't thank enough your administrators, your principal, your parents, your teachers, and all the relatives that made this possible. So to you, to the entire city of Chicago, who's doubled down on the children of the city of Chicago and doubled down on the kids of Bowen, I ask one favor as your mayor. I have no doubt you're gonna be a tremendous success. Come back to Chicago when you graduate and make that success in the city of Chicago. Because if you pick Chicago home, we will have a great success as the city of Chicago. You can see it in your eyes and hear it in your voices.